information, and we're gonna talk about this in a few moments, but information about like uh, the trip insurance, right? If you wanna actually insure the trip from cancellation, et cetera. Well, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but there's a URL code, you can go there and look at that as well. Um, talks about stuff about roommates, single occupancy versus double occupancy, et cetera. Um, and then any questions you have. What they would like us to do is, is I'm fully available for any questions that you might have, but really all the questions about the tour, they wanna handle that for us. And so there's, you can click on uh, by phone or email, send them questions and they'll answer them really, really quickly. So that's the brochure. So if we can go back from there to um, the, the link. Yep, so cruise down from there, let's scroll down. All right, and keep a look, going a little bit more. And this is starts talking about uh, pricing. And so there's two different pricings here. One is land only, meaning that you're gonna get your own flight arrangements, right? Say you have a ton of points, or maybe you have someone like, I have a friend of mine whose brother uh, is a pilot, and so everyone in his family flies free anywhere they wanna go all the time. It's pretty amazing. So um, he would be a guy that would go, I'm gonna do the land only package. And that is all the touring once you get in country uh, will be with us in the bus. We're hoping to take one full bus. I think the bus seats like 50 people roughly. Um, we're hoping to do that. Um, and so every hotel that we're in, uh, the buses that we're in, any other transportation that we might have, all the fees to get into the different sites, um, breakfast and dinner daily are all covered by that cost. Um, you'd be responsible for your own uh, flight arrangements to and from, okay? So if that's what you would like to do, it's 2820. If you want all-inclusive, you don't have to worry about shopping for flights and all that stuff, it's 4340 per person um, is kind of the pricing. On the left of that, um, there's a, a, yep, right up there, so if you scroll up just a smidge from there, you'll see the, the daily tour itinerary, you can click on that. And that just kind of gives you an idea, a real quick breakdown of wherever we're gonna be in those, those eight days we'll be in country. Okay, so we're gonna be going the first day, we're traveling, we're arriving in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is a pretty amazing place. It's kind of like, how many of you guys have ever been to Huntington Beach, California? It's like being in Huntington Beach. It's pretty amazing when um, you're down there. And so we'll just spend a little bit of time there in Tel Aviv. In fact, I'm hoping to connect with a friend of ours, a good friend that um, received the Lord. He's a Jewish guy. I met him at the gym. He's Jewish at the time um, and uh, had an opportunity to share the gospel with him. He, became, he got saved, went through our school of ministry that we had, and now he's working for Jews for Jesus in Tel Aviv. And so he's there now um, sharing the gospel with other, other Jews. Um, and so hopefully we'll get a chance to connect with him when he's there. But anyway, so um, stop, starting in Tel Aviv, from there we're going to go to Tiberias. And Tiberias is a town on the other side of, of Capernaum and Galilee. You can actually see if you're in Galilee. Looking across, you see on the hillside Tiberias. And we'll be staying there. And from there, we'll be going to Caesarea, Mount Carmel, Megiddo. Um, we'll drive by Nazareth, it looks like, and Cana. Um, and this is one thing we're trying to work on. I was sharing with, with Rory. Last, I went two years ago in 2019. And we were able to go to Nazareth. It's the first time we've ever been able to go. And they actually have a working village as if it was 2,000 years ago, where people are actually living there. And so you get a chance to walk through and you see people working, you know, shepherds working. You see people carving stone. You see people living in houses. They live there 24 seven, they're gardening, you know, they're cultivating the land. And it gives you an idea of really what it's like. And here's the cool part is at the end of the tour, you get to go into the synagogue, an original synagogue that was there. You walk into it, it's super small. It's maybe the size of our chapel. Um, and you sit inside there and then we actually get to teach about when Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah. And then um, it's, it's very, it's, it's remarkable. And so we get a chance to do that. We're working on trying to get a chance to do that. Uh, from there, we'll go uh, the Beatitudes, Capernaum, Gadara, St. Peter's Fish Lunch. That's where we get to do all that, eat, eat fish eyeballs and stuff. Um, wooden boat ride on the Sea of Galilee in Magdala. And it's pretty remarkable. We were there two, two years ago, and when we went out, it was calm like glass. And you're in these massive boats, and we had three boats that we kind of stuck together, and we we're having worship time together, and we started doing teaching, and all of a sudden the wind picked up. And we read in the stories how, how the disciples were toiling at the oars, right? It was very, very difficult. Um, and you get a chance to see it in that moment, it became very real how quickly 
the, the weather can change on that body of water from glass to the point where literally um, the guy who's teaching is yelling to try and allow people to hear. And we had to cut the ropes that tied the boats together because it got so bad. And we ended up just stopping and going back in shore. It got really crazy. So um, it's a wonderful time. Uh, baptism, Magdala, Golan Heights. We'll drive to Mount Hermon, Nimrod's Castle, uh, Caesarea Philippi, which is an incredible um, seaport um, a city. That's where Jesus took the disciples and he asked the question, who do people say that I am? Right? And the response from Peter, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, upon this rock, upon that statement, I will build my church. And so we get a chance to go there. Tell Dan, the headwaters of the Jordan River. We're going to be going, going to Bet Shan, uh, Gideon Spring, uh, Jerusalem. We'll be going, once we're in Jerusalem, Lord willing, we'll be able to go to see a bunch of different things like um, the Western Wall, Hezekiah's Tunnel, which is pretty amazing. You guys know the story of Hezekiah and the tunnel that was built. And during a siege, um, he got two groups of people working together to try and carve a tunnel through solid rock to bring water into the city so they could survive the siege. And it's, you get a chance to walk through that. It's pretty amazing. The first time we ever did it, um, back in 2000, we had candles walking through this tunnel. And what happens in tunnels? It gets a little windy. I kept blowing the candles out. There's no, there's no light inside there at all. And so it was pretty, pretty crazy. This last time when we had um, flashlights, it's much, much better. Um, so we get a chance to do that. You come out in the Pool of Siloam, um, Western Wall Tunnel, Temple Mount, etc. So it's a wonderful, wonderful trip. There's a lot we're going to be able to see. It happens quickly. Rory and I were just talking about it. In the past, we've tried to shove as much information, as many sites in as you possibly could while we're there to try to get your money's worth of it. But it's so much information. At the end of the day, your mind is just swimming. So one of the things we encourage you to do is take notes at the end of the day, write in your journal about the things that you saw, the things that were impactful, um, so you don't forget it, because there's just so much coming at you um, at one time. Well, I get a chance towards the end of the time to actually walk through the old city of Jerusalem to take the steps of Jesus as we go through. Last time we were there, we actually were there on the first day of Ramadan. Don't recommend that at all, because um, we are Christians literally swimming against the current as tens of thousands of Muslims are coming in. And they didn't like us being there. Um, it was very, it was a good adventure. I'll say that. It was pretty fun. Um, I remember at the end, we finally got to the first stage of, 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 of the cross. And I got there and I had pushed through the gate. And I had bent over. I'm like, who planned this thing? You know, and it was just crazy, that all the people who were there. So we'll end uh, Garden Tomb. And then on the 25th, uh, we'll be heading home. So we'll spend the last day, or actually we'll spend... Um, Thanksgiving Day in, in Jerusalem, which would be awesome. So any questions about where we'll be going, the sites we'll be going to, etc.? No? Um, many times we'll, we'll be hiking quite a bit, and so you, you, kinda, you wanna bring, bring good shoes, you wanna be in pretty good shape uh, to be able to hike some of these things. Like we'll go up to, um, you know, climbing up into the mountains and some of these little hills that they have. Um, and it will take a little bit uh, of effort to do so, but just be ready for that. Um, it won't be very hot when we're there, so it'll be kind of nice. The weather should be good. We usually go in the springtime where it's starting to get pretty warm. You could get some 90 to 100 degree days as you're walking, and it's a little much, but it shouldn't be too bad in November. Um, and that time of year is kind of a lull in their tourism, so it shouldn't be very crowded either, so it should be great. So we talked about pricing details. If you click on the pricing details again, it goes up there, uh, the second one down from the top, right underneath daily. That gives you when things are to be due. So fe February 20, or sorry, February 15th is 25% is of your cost. There is a $400 non-refundable deposit uh, when you apply. Um, and then April 15th, there's a 50% is due. August 25th, full payment is due. And then it talks about the cancellation policy. And that kind of brings us to um, the travel insurance. So automatically with the cost of the trip, you have medical insurance that's covered. So if anything happens to you medically, it's covered. If they have to evacuate you out of country, that's covered. Okay, all that's covered. Um, but if the trip gets canceled for whatever reason, either something happens in your family that 
that doesn't allow you to continue on the trip or the country shuts down for whatever reason. Um, you, can, you can get travel insurance for that. And so like I said before, you can click on that little URL barcode right there. And there's actually two different um, companies that provide insurance. Um, and so you can click on that one or if you go back to the page that we just were at, um, it's called, I think it's Rome, uh, at the very bottom right there, keep going down, right there, Rome Right Upgrade Insurance. And there's different packages that you can choose. Um, but that will cover everything on the ground, so to speak. Um, I do encourage you to do that. And I'm not sure exactly how much it costs, but the plans are all there for you. You fill out the information, they'll give you a quote. But I do encourage, especially in the world that we live in now where everything's changing all the time. So that would probably bring us to the next question. You know, if we start doing this, is it going to happen? And so everything we're hearing right now as it is, bless you. I was just talking with um, our, our travel agent and he's constantly on the phone with people on the ground in Israel. He said that in the middle of this month, the Knesset is going to meet and they're probably going to pass a law, so to speak, that um, they're going to keep their country open from now on. They live 75% of their income comes from tourism. They realize that we cannot keep shutting down. We have to learn to live with COVID. Um, and so we can't, re we can't react to everything. We need to learn to respond to it appropriately. And so they're going to probably start opening up from this point on. In fact, they're actually sending out um, a team. Uh, the travel agency is sending out a team on the 29th of December. They're going to be there for two weeks. So right now, everything's open. All the sites are open. As far as masks are concerned, uh, they do require that you have masks in, in public um, indoor facilities, not outside, but indoor. Um, you don't need to have them on the bus. You do need to have them in the airports right now. That may change come November, but that's just what they're asking us to do, uh, anyone who's traveling there for now. Um, as far as the next question, I'm sure, is do you have to get um, the vaccine? And yes, you do. In order to go, the vaccine is required. Um, or you have to go there and you have to probably, you know, get quarantined for 10 days or something before you go. But right now they're saying just get the vaccine. Um, and that's what they're asking for. So those two things are kind of important, masks and vaccines. Well, we don't know, it could, very well could be. We could come, you know, some come August, they're like, hey, no more vaccines, it's not a big deal. But as of right now, you need to have it six months before you travel. So that's what they're saying. So that gives us a little bit of time for things to possibly you know, level out and change. You have to be fully vaccinated by the time you leave to go. Um, yes, I can get clarity on that. It's a great question. Um, but do you have to be fully vaccinated before you leave? So, for example, like you have the Johnson and Johnson, which is one vaccine, versus you know Moderna and others that are two two vaccines. We're hoping and praying that by the time this happens, that there's gonna be some new options that come out, so it's not those things, but we'll see. Just keep praying, but this, right now, those are what they're asking for. So if we were leaving tomorrow, that's what they would ask for. In, in be between now and November, 11 months from now, things may change. I, I can find out, yeah, I can definitely find out for you. Yeah. Yeah, we're you know, in, in many ways we're guests in their country. And so that's what they're asking for us to do. So those are that's the hard one, right? That's the and I can see the people's Facebook people like, oh shoot, I was so happy until you said that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of it right now. And again, there's all these different pictures of places that we're going to be. That's pretty much the the you know the lion's share of information. Um, again, any other questions that you have, I mean, uh, myself or Rory can answer those for you, or you can just discuss it with them directly. Um, any questions, real quick, that I can answer for you? Yeah. As far as the physical growth, walking. Yeah. 
Yes, there's a lot of walking. Typically, we take buses to sites, and then we get off the bus and we walk from there. So some of them. Not, I mean, not all of it is, is you know, super difficult, but there is. I mean, last time we were out, there were two people that had walkers, and that was very difficult because the terrain is is pretty, you know, pretty difficult. Um, we made it, you know, we made it, but it wasn't it wasn't the most comfortable. And a couple of times they stayed they stayed back in the in the bus. Uh, but if you can, you know, typically if you can, you know, you can walk, um, say a quarter of a mile, you're probably fine. Okay, elevation is is not much, I and mean, we're not asking to you know, Barnes Butte, nothing like Barnes Butte, right? Nothing like that. Um, well, what, can you do Barnes Butte? If you can do it, then you're great. Yeah, it's it's not it's not grueling by any means, but there is some uneven ground. If you're not used to walking on uneven ground, if you need help walking, it might be a little difficult. When we're walking the old city, there's a lot of uh, variance and elevation in the old city. There are some stairs, um, but nothing nothing major. All right, I think the biggest thing is there is just trying to navigate through all of the people that were there that would be there. But I think at this time of year, we're going to be fine. I think the biggest one is probably Masada, but there's two options. You can either take a gondola all the way up, which is pretty awesome. You get the height, you get to see, you know, from that vantage point, or you can hike up it. And it's a, it's a trek walking up there. It really is. So um, if you're adventurous, you can take the gondola up and walk down, or you can, if you're really adventurous, you can do up and back, or you just take the gondola back and forth. It's a lot faster, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Yes, sir. So once, so meals work. Once we're in country, breakfast and dinner is covered. Okay, your lunches and stuff, you have to kind of get on your own, and we'll stop in different places for you to be able to do that. You typically, if you're going to be going, like we'll be going to several different sites in a day, there's always a lunch place that we stop at for that, and that's typically on you to, to pay for that. Um, but breakfast and breakfast there are amazing, and the dinners are amazing, so it's, it's really good. Um, as far as traveling from, say we're meeting at the airport, and then those, all those meals are on you while we're in the United States, they're on you. Um, that's how we've done in the past. So, and I think we are leaving from, are we leaving from Redmond? Yeah, Redmond to probably Portland or Seattle and then from over there, or, or LA. Sometimes it's New York or yeah. Atlanta, and then, or sometimes direct. Yeah, we're trying to find, so there are some really good flights to take, right? Good providers, and there are some ones that aren't so good, and we're trying to find the ones that are good. <laughs> so we're looking into that as well. It's a long flight. You know, and it is a long flight, but um, it's it's pretty comfortable. We're talking how long? Twenty three hours travel? Yeah, travel. You don't need a visa to get into Israel, but you do need a, a passport. Okay, so you do need to have a passport that is that is uh, valid six months beyond travel. Right? That means so that when we're coming back, it has to still be valid for six months beyond that. Okay? Any questions about that? I see some people doing some math. <laughs> anything else? Roy, anything you want to say? Yeah, so you're more than welcome to sign up now. Um, we don't think there's going to be a limit by any means um, as far as, you know, we're going to cut it off at a certain level. 
uh, like I said, we have enough for a bus that can that can uh, seat 50 people, and we've talked about if we need to go to another uh, bus, we can probably do that as well. So um, I think the minimum is like 20 at the minimum. Uh, 22 is the minimum to go, um, but there is no maximum by any means. Okay. And we may try to, like, depending on what we're seeing early on in sign up, you know, trying to give, like, kind of first preference to Calvary Prineville people. Um, so if you're a Calvary Prineville person and you know you might want to go, then you might want to get signed up fast just because as time goes on and we're trying to fill a bus, we may open it up to the public or to the state. Um, but we would love to give preference to you guys as a church. And then I know there's like a grandpa or someone who doesn't go to Calvary or whatever, but that's, that's fine. You count. Okay. Family blood connected. So, um, but yeah, we'd love to give preference to you. If you think you want to go, let us know soon. Is there a time frame that they need to be signed up by? I think if, if we had, no, there's no real time frame. I think uh, deposits, um, if we knew by right around probably the first part of January, that would be ideal. We can start making our, our, our list. But again, 25% is due on February 15th of your cost. So um, probably by, by that time, we should, we should have decisions made by February. And so, and that's where like, you know, the trip cancellation, say you start getting all the way into it, then something happens, you have to pull out. That's where your, your insurance that you've been paying. I think it even talks about there's supposed to be, I think, 10 days or 21 days prior to the first payment. Um, you're supposed to have that cancellation insurance and it kicks in, you know, 21 days, or I think, I think it's 21 days. If you'll read it, I can see but it should say how much, uh, what time that it is before that happens. Um, yeah, oh, what does it say right there in the bottom? Tw within 21 days, what does that say? If the insurance is purchased within 21 days of initial trip payment, oh, it's moving. A waiver of pre-existing medical condition exclusions will be provided at no additional cost, okay? So, but you can also ask them questions as well about those trip, that trip insurance. Um, if that's something that you think that you're going to start going into, but you're just not quite sure, but you want to kind of, you know, get your spot on the on the trip, um, you can ask those guys those questions as well. All right. If you want to room with someone specific, like say, say Thomas wants to go and he wants to room with Russell, you can actually ask them to, to put you guys together. Or if there's three of you guys going, say Ty, Thomas, and Russell are going, then you can ask or request that, and they'll put you guys in rooms together. Or if you don't want to stay with your husband, you don't want him to stay with someone else. <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably too late by then because they have to start getting um, airfare, hotels, and all that stuff by that time. It's probably going to be too late by June. Yeah. So the earlier the better. Gives them a lot of time on their end to kind of organize and coordinate all that stuff. So, yep. live stream can get this. So the question was asked, who will do all the talking on the trip? I think you know, and deep in your heart, you know. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, but we are given a tour guide, and so a lot of times on the buses, they'll have a microphone, and we'll be driving by things, and they'll be showing stuff, and then typically when we get to a place, they'll give kind of an initial history of it or something like that, and then uh, either Chris or myself or maybe someone else will teach. We'll probably do the bulk of uh, like some devotional type teachings uh, there at that spot. Uh, maybe give some people on the trip a chance to do a little devotion, you know, or something like that, but probably at every point. Um, and then we've been to Israel enough that kind of on the bus, we'll probably do a little sharing as well. And uh, so Chris and myself and the tour guide will probably do like the bulk of the 
messages or the tour. So, but I love a good microphone. So, um, <laughs> really blessed that the bus comes with one. Oh, I guess we'll have to. Bummer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the, tour, the tour guys there are amazing, too. I mean, they, they literally go to school, like college, so to speak. They go to school in order to become a tour guide. It's a big deal. And so they're all just amazing. Last time we had this lady named Olga, who is Russian, that immigrated to Israel, but she's Jewish Russian, immigrated to Israel, and she was amazing. Just a really, really knowledgeable and fun to be around. She loved the Lord, and so it was awesome. So she was a Messianic Jew living in Israel. So it was pretty awesome. We talked about everything about kids growing up and raising kids and, and having them go off to college and what that's like, and it was, it was pretty fun. In the questions? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So that would probably be a really good question. Because that's it's all new for them as well, right? Because they've had policies, cancellation policies for years. And now with COVID, everything has been changed. So um, that's a great question to ask them directly. Yeah. And if you, ha if you get the information, please share it with us so we can then disperse it to everyone else as well. Anyone else? It truly is a trip of a lifetime. It's, it's amazing. And it's like Roy and I are talking about, I was even talking with Michelle, my wife, going like, it, it, it's one of those opportunities that could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. And if this is the year, man, seize it. Let, let this year be the year that you go to Israel. You just never know what's gonna happen next. You know, we do believe that Jesus is coming. We do believe he's coming quickly. And I would like to see the old Jerusalem and the new Jerusalem, right? And compare the two. Like, oh, I remember it looked like that, but now it looks like this, right? You get a chance to see it when Jesus creates a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, as we read in Revelation. Chris and I, uh, just in spending time together and talking about Israel, uh, there was some wrestling on if we should do it this year, you know, like... Because, you know, we're watching the news and, and then there's this new variant, you know, and all those kinds of things. And I was just like, man, what do you think? Like, do we postpone it again? And, you know, nobody knows what two years from now is going to look like or four years from now is going to look like. And, and, you know, probably back in the spring, I'd been mentioning it to you guys that in a year and a half from now, we got an Israel trip coming. And, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, if I have to wear a mask on a bus, you know, or whatever, or, you know, I think you guys know kind of where I've been and where our church has done with a lot of these policies and things um, and mandates. And uh, so just as we were one day, we were driving and I was like, what do you think, Chris? Like, what, should we do it? You know, with, if there's these things that are kind of hurdles and just Chris was like, man, I'd strap three masks on my face, you know, and he's very similar to where I'm at in all of this. He's like, just to to get that once in a lifetime chance to go, you know, and so this is what's in front of us and praise the Lord, it's not three masks to the face and it's, you know, uh, there may be, you know, um, you, we may find it a little similar to Prineville over there, you know, it's a pretty conservative country. And so, um, yeah, so I think it's, I was like, once Chris kind of said that, I'm like, oh yeah, like it's, these are just little, little hurdles. But of course, everyone has their own convictions and struggles and you know, reasons why not to do it, and that's totally respectable. Um, but yeah, we're excited we have it in front of us, and it seems like that's from the Lord. So, yeah. Oh, man. American food all the way. Um, so, we will eat um, a lot of Israeli cuisine um, in our hotels, uh, there's buffets. Um, and it's a lot of like roasted chicken and a ton of hummus and vegetables and you dip in vegetables and hummus and ooh, fruit and oh my goodness, you guys, like when we go to places like Masada where it's desert and it's just this dry but delicious Mediterranean air, 
Um, and then they, down at the bottom of Masada, they got all these grapefruit squishing stands, you know, where they got oranges and grapefruits and they slice them with a machete and throw them on the thing and squeeze it and you just get all this fresh citrus juice and stuff. And, um, but it's kind of like a blander food, maybe, at least what I've experienced. Um, and, uh, but good, you know, and, but you know, the buffets of just like all kinds of things and baklava and, you know, stuff like that. So tons of hummus and uh, falafel, lots of falafel and, um, and uh, like uh, Eurosh type um, pita bread, lamb. And, uh, but then I think like, I know in my past there's been like a McDonald's, you know, but you don't get cheeseburgers, no cheeseburgers, okay? No mixing the lamb with its mother's milk over there. So, um, but uh, yeah, good question though. The food is good and desserts and delicious drinks and you know, so it's really good, yeah. I took the microphone from me, did you notice that? <laughs> there is incredible because they, I think it, Israel is like the second, the world's second most producer of fruit in the world. And so um, it's incredible. I remember one of the, my, my favorite memories of Israel is we were on the Mount of Beatitudes and we were worshiping up there. It was an incredible time. And then we were given time to kind of spread out and just have some quiet time, individual time before the Lord. And I'm walking down this path. I keep, I keep smelling this really beautiful wonderful aroma. I'm like, what is that? And I ended up coming into this, this grapefruit orchard, and then the, the trees were just starting to blossom. If you've ever smelled the blossoms on a grapefruit tree, it is incredible. And so I just kind of found myself in this tunnel of just flowering grapefruit trees overlooking the Galilee and just worshiping the Lord on my own. And to this day, like, that's one of my favorite memories of all time of, of us being there. I can almost still smell how it smelled. And so and the fruit's incredible. You look down from there, from where we, if we go to the traditional site of where uh, the Mount of Beatitudes is, we'll be on the hillside there doing a little Bible study and worship time. Looking down, there's this, there's, there's a massive orchard, I guess, what do you call it? Banana trees, orchards, banana trees, down below. Um, it's their plantation of banana trees. <laughs> yes. That's more, that's more like, it's like the third person, second person. <laughs> <laughs> So it's wonderful. It's a, it's a wonderful trip. And there's going to be so many opportunities for memories that you're going to have there. It's just incredible. I can't say enough about it, really. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions? And then I'm going to pray for you guys as you make these decisions and head that direction. Okay. It's kind of nice because inspired travel is really planning the trip for us, you know, which is really nice. And so... Um, they're kind of the people, the go-to people. So this is kind of a good chance to ask questions, and a lot of us hang out, and so that's fine. But um, for the most part, we're going to encourage you to, you know, utilize inspired travel. So, all right. Lord, I just lift up uh, all of these friends who are looking at a year out from now of um, maybe taking a trip to Israel. And um, thank you for that we live in a time like this where we can do that and, and in a day be over there and, and just be encouraged in our walk with you and be discipled and uh, to just have our minds and our hearts strengthened in you to be able to go from there back um, to the world we live in and to just declare who you are and your faithfulness and your truth. And um, I just so, I'm so thankful that I can look back on four or five trips and just see how you provided financially for me over those times. And um, I just pray over the group that would go, that there would just be just incredible provision, Lord, uh, for the trip and resources and time off. And, um, and then, Lord, as there's the wrestling through about vaccinations, um, we're just so thankful you understand that and you're compassionate and there's some real deep convictions um, why someone would forego a trip uh, because of that and just pray that they would just be fully convinced in their mind or if someone is supposed to get that vaccine um, for this journey and this trip, they would be able to be fully convinced in their mind as they've wrestled through it and walked through it. And, um, and Lord, if I could just pray one big prayer of faith, just that uh, we would just be seeing the end of the COVID um, mindset and worldview and um, just the mandates and all of those things, Lord. Um, but we know that you've got a plan in the midst of the, the hard stuff, Lord. So just give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Anyone concerned about safety at all when we're there? I was just thinking about that. So is it safe, right? I see Shannon going, eh. yes. Yeah, just like in Primeville. Yeah. yeah, it is incredibly safe. I mean, you think about places that are here that, you know, we're living in the United States and it's a safe place and, you know, we have organized security, et cetera. Um, things have changed in the last couple of years. I'm looking at Portland right now, right? But, but it is incredibly safe. It, it is. You'll, no, but you'll see, but they have military everywhere. Um, but they're just, they're low-key, like last time I was there, they had, this, they had these really cool hats, they had these double wings on these hats, and I went up to this guy, I'm like, hey, um, how much do you want for that hat? And he goes, uh, he laughed, he goes, and I go, no, I'm serious, like, how much do you want for that hat? You know, I, I'll, I'll give you 50 bucks for that hat, and he's like, I can't, I, he goes, I would in a heartbeat, but everything that's issued to us, we're responsible for, and if I gave you this, and the biggest thing he said is that if I gave this to you, there's no telling how, who, in whose hands it could go into later and they could wear this and cause some kind of issue. So we're responsible for everything. But if I, I'd totally give it to you. You can talk to all the soldiers. They're incredibly friendly. In fact, we were actually at a museum one time years ago, Michelle and I, and, and I just wanted to stay outside the museum and pray. And I'm sitting at this picnic table and this car pulls up and all these female soldiers get out and they're carrying machine guns. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not America anymore, right? And they had brown paper bags for lunches like we have here. And they, and they sat down on the table and they opened their brown paper bag like they're sitting in high school having lunch. And they're just laughing and they're having a good time and they're talking. It's just, it's normal. It's completely normal there. At first, the first time you'll see it, it'd be like, oh, wow. You know, it'd be like someone here, I don't know, from California comes to church in the amphitheater for worship services one day and we see a couple guys with guns on their hips. It's a little bit like, oh, that's different but it's completely safe. It really is. You'll feel safer there than you feel in many places. Maybe not in Primeville, but in many places, you know. Probably more so than in Bend, you know, for sure. But it is really, really safe, and the people there, they're amazing people, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not just saying that to get you to go, even though you should be going. I'm not just saying, it is safe, it's wonderful. No, it's wonderful. The, the only thing I thought was weird is this last time I went, I've never had an issue before, and then we're with a group of like 200 people, and I'm like one of the last people going through, and I go up to the window, and they ask you questions, like they're just security questions, kind of like our TSA guys, but they're asking them more questions, and they said, what's your mother's 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 maiden name? And I go, I don't know, and they go, stand over there. And I was like, What? And so they took me in this one room by myself, and I sat there, and I thought, I just got to play this cool. Act like I'm not nervous. I pulled out a book. I'm sitting there just reading a book. This lady comes in, and she goes, can I ask you a couple questions? I go, yeah. She goes, what's your name? I told my name. You ever been here before? Yes. Why are you here? Tourism. Okay. Um, are you here with a group? I'm here with a group. Okay. Um, great. And she leaves. And I'm sitting there for, again, for another 15 minutes. And I'm just sitting, and there's a, there's a guard. It's a girl. She's probably in her 20s, and she's just kind of watching me. I'm thinking, just play this thing like I'm not nervous. It'll be totally fine. Reading my book, I'm texting on my phone. The whole group's texting me, where are you? You know, and I'm just like, I'm just sitting here in security, just waiting. Then all of a sudden, I hear my name being called. My first name's actually John, John Christopher. I don't go by John. That's my grandfather's name. And so this lady's going, John. And I can't see anybody. I'm not paying attention. I'm reading my book. John. Read my book. Oh, that's probably talking to me. And so she goes, John Cross. It's like, oh, that's me. So I turn this corner, and there's a lady standing there, bleach blonde hair, blue eyes. And she goes, are you John Cross? I go, yep. She goes, here's your passport. Thanks for coming. And lets me go. That's the only weird thing that's ever happened to me. But I sat there for probably a half an hour. But that's just them making sure the country's safe, right? And for whatever reason, when I said I don't know my mother's 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 maiden name, they're like, you should know that. We know that. Of course, like, you know, they're, it's all about, yeah, right? And they're Jewish. It comes through their mother's side. So she's asking me, like, you know, who are you? Where, where was your mother born? Where was your father born? All this stuff. And I'm answering all those questions. But I didn't know my great, great, great grandmother's maiden name. So you guys might want to do some investigation and get that figured out before you go. But, no, they don't know. But anyway, but yeah, they don't know. But the, the point is it's, it is super safe. 
It really is. Like I was walking by myself in downtown Jerusalem um, to go get gifts for my kids. Totally safe, you know. Um, you can walk through like the, the Jewish section. They have different sections of the city uh, with all the different shopping sections. They're trying to sell you wares all the time. Um, you can have great conversations with people. It's completely safe by yourself. Just make sure that when you're supposed to be at a certain place at a certain time, you're there because the bus does leave and you'll be stuck kind of in the city by yourself. But we give everyone a card that has the hotel name. You show any taxi cab that, that hotel name, that card, they'll take you home. Does it happen? It does. Especially when you're thinking you have several hundred people you're trying to move through a city. Sorry, you had a question? No? Yep. You forgot it? Sorry. Yes? That's a great question. Uh, it depends on how many gifts you want to buy. All right. Uh, this is one thing I would say is like you could buy all kinds of things. I bought the shofar, right? You guys know what a shofar is? The horn that they blow to kind of call to worship. Really hard to carry back. <laughs> you know, it doesn't quite fit in your bag. And then I still have that thing. I've, every time I, I, have, I look at it, I'm like, I don't know why I bought that thing. I've never blown it. It's too big to carry. But how much money would you want to have? Probably I would think maybe for food and for gifts, just maybe a couple hundred bucks at the most. Um, things are, are fairly inexpensive. It's not too bad. Uh, so, yeah. What's that? After COVID. After COVID what? Oh, I don't know because tourism is, they might be, they're trying to get people to come. So I'm not sure. It's a good question. I would think that it might have increased a little bit and or the opposite. They're dropping prices to, as an incentive to have people come. I don't know for sure. But it, last time I was there two years ago, it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. But you have great falafel. Really, really good falafel. It's like this. It's a bean that's compressed into a little ball. It's really good. It's really good. Garbanzo beans. Same stuff they make, same stuff they make like hummus out of and stuff like that. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah, really, really good. A lot of dates. Anything else? Any other questions? Super safe, wonderful experience, memories made, and all of us will be connected for eternity that way. Just all the memories. It, you can have conversations, yeah. Um, and I've had some good conversations, and I've had some not so good conversations. <laughs> Depends on, on the setting, etc. But they're, yeah, they're open to it. There's so many Christians and other faiths that come through there. Yeah, it would be crazy to, to say it's illegal, and then you have millions of people in jail. So no. While you're in country? Well, yeah, if you have, even if it was here, you know, um, say you're in, uh, where would we say, Texas. Say you're in Dallas, Texas. You can't even have COVID. You're going to be, the, they're going to ask you to quarantine if you have it. But you'll be in a wonderful hotel with a pool and room service. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> you can stay there. They might keep you. They're going to ask you when you walk up, like, are you Jewish? <laughs> yeah. Just have those little curls right here. You'd be good. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh. So you don't have to pack one back. That's smart thinking. Yeah. We'll start the bidding at $5. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Shekels. Okay. I think that's good. Yep. Awesome.